Don't be scared to repeat yourself on short form apps. So many of you are scared to repeat yourself on this app, but that's actually what's working right now. Look at the group Good Neighbors, who just racked up 100 million streams on Spotify in 60 days on their first song, and how much they grew from this. They repeatedly do the same format of a two-slide carousel that is in line with the emotion of their song they're singing. So many of you have some success with the video and don't think about how you could do that video in a similar way, but even better. But if you look around TikTok, the artists who are doing best here keep reiterating on their successes and figuring out how to do them even better and keeping the same formats. This is how you hook fans' attention on TikTok. So let's say your song is out and you're garnering some new listeners. Making some sort of spectacle around your track captures their attention and will get them to tune into that song. Spectacles can be a lot of different things. Like, for some reason, some people really love to see things on fire or blown up. But if you're not a pyromaniac, things like basketball trick shots, body humor, absurd visuals, and any act that gets people astonished really goes far. Check out how Quadeca used his skills in soccer to create a montage of insane trick shots or Porter Robinson throwing his DJ gear into a pool saying he's done DJ. Here's something you could do, for example. Let's say you pride yourself on having raw and untuned vocals. You could pull a stunt where you buy an old auto-tune rack unit and destroy it or something creative like that. You can't predict which platform you're gonna blow up on anymore. Instagram has finally caught up with TikTok on making the algorithm for musicians engage users with songs so well. And so many people, myself included, have found it way easier to grow on Instagram versus TikTok right now. That's not to say everyone's gonna grow easier on Instagram, but you should experiment for yourself. If you look at these videos from the group Good Neighbors who've been blowing up, you can see that the same video will do insanely well on Instagram, but lack engagement on TikTok and vice versa. The algorithms are totally different on these platforms, so what flops on one could blow up on another. Musicians get discouraged way too easily. One of the most insane things that musicians don't realize is even the biggest accounts of their favorite musicians go down to like a thousand views on some videos they post on short form apps, even after they've gotten millions of views on other videos. Too many of you don't look at the views of other artists who do great on Reels and TikTok and see the waves of ups and downs that those artists go through just like you. Now, their ups may be much higher than yours, but the moral is they don't get discouraged and they keep learning and improving, whereas so many of you give up and get depressed whenever numbers go down, even though that's what happens to nearly everyone. Putting calls to action in your videos is so embarrassing. It's 2024. Every single person on these apps knows they can stream your song. If you're still telling fans to stream a song on Spotify or listen to it, it's embarrassing. There's thousands of songs that have millions of streams from TikTok and Reels viewers, and everyone knows they can listen to that song if they want to. <laughs> Musicians are doing TikTok hashtags all wrong. I've seen it enough that I know for a fact hashtags can help get people who the algorithm doesn't know what to do with to the right audience. But the key thing here is that niche is the king. Instagram themselves have suggested repeatedly to use niche hashtags. I see so many musicians repeatedly using random viral hashtags like hashtag alternative hip hop, Hashtag FYP and hashtag EDM. These are truly the most worthless hashtags. Three to eight hashtags are said to be most helpful. However, I've seen videos do very well on TikTok with just one good hashtag to three. One good niche hashtag that's really specific to your genre and that you see a lot of other people who seem like you when you do the search for that hashtag is way more valuable than five basic ones. Replies on TikTok are essential to getting the algorithm to bring people in to listen to your song so it blows up. Seriously, you need to coordinate with one of your friends to do a fun reply to some of your best content so it gets an algorithmic boost when people are starting that conversation. Since we really see the content that gets replies, especially in video reply form, really gets juiced by the algorithm. You should be doing stitches, duets, video replies, and reposts to juice the algorithm. If a fan gets caught in a circle of content where there's replies within it, they'll often repeatedly be served things that TikTok sees in that circle of content. And this can help them get addicted to your song by hearing it numerous times and potentially become a fan. You can use edits to blow up your song. Musicians are getting tons of streams of their songs by taking videos of their niche from across platforms and repurposing that content in a lot of cool ways, like doing reaction videos. You can make green screen videos of trending news 
relevant viral moments to your genre. Or maybe there's a funny video everyone's talking about, or something as big as happening in the current week. Green screen, reactions, video replying, and stitching relevant videos are people who are in your niche all feed the algorithm and include you into the circle of content around the content you're engaging with. So drop your song in one of those videos and show off an edit with your song in it. What's the best way for indie artists to spend a small budget? I have some new thoughts on this actually. Since we're in the earworm era of music, promotion only goes as well as your hook is. Since even if your TikTok goes viral, if your hook is mid, people won't jump over to Spotify to stream it. Whereas if your hook is really good, even if your marketing is mid, it'll still get streams. But we do have to make this content work in the algorithm. So owning a good soft box to light your videos with, a good quality phone camera, and using some of the premium effects on CapCut can do a world of good for your short form content. And honestly, every week I do an hour long stream on what artists are doing to blow up their songs right now. And many of them that are blowing up are never even spending a dollar of their own money and doing it all themselves. Stop making TikToks and reels that are announcements. Every day I talk to musicians with millions of monthly listeners and ones with nearly no monthly listeners. And they both have the same problem. If they make funny videos or clever videos around their songs or skits, they can get tons of views. But when they announce a show or a tour or a record, That'll get one tenth or even one one hundredth of the other videos they make. The key is you need to sneak your announcements into those videos that you normally do that are skits or whatever else. For example, you could be making a video about how Seven Street Burger is the best smash burger in New York City. I mean, no competition. And then say, I can't wait to eat there on my upcoming tour and flash your tour dates. Find subtle ways to cross plug in the format of your videos that do best. Does it matter what time you post your content? I hate when people make conclusions to this question that they have no proof of. There is no definitive proof that there's a definite time where content does best. What's a funny occurrence that I do all the time as an experiment with artists is that if you post a video at say, 7 a.m. and take it down to tweak the most minuscule thing, maybe one word misspelled in the caption or something, and you re-upload that video the same day at 9 p.m., you can get drastically different numbers. Every musician needs to experiment for themselves if they see a better response at certain times to post. Since the audience TikTok is testing you on is totally different and can be in different moods at different times. And since you get tested in an initial small audience with each video, determining which time is best for you to get that attention is crucial crucial to your growth. Do not talk to your existing fan base. <laughs> the biggest mistake I see musicians doing all the time, making videos where they talk as if they're talking to their fans instead of people who are about to hear them for the first time. I would really suggest putting more thought into what you could do to introduce yourself to the audience who's never heard of you rather than your existing audience all the time. Experimenting with self-introductions in videos or displaying a graphic have seemed to work well to explain who you are as an artist to strangers. When you're making each video, you should always be thinking, I'm making this for people who've never heard of me and it's going to get people to hear me. And you can especially introduce yourself to new audiences if you make music related insights or recommend songs you like in your genre. Utilizing TikTok duets can do wonders for your algorithmic connections and will help you break out of that 200, 300 views per post algorithmic jail. A really efficient way to duet that I've seen is to recontextualize someone else's video. Finding posts from musicians or even managers and other creatives in the circle of what you're doing, especially if it's an artist doing a rant or talking about something important that you can amplify, duet it and then recontextualize it by simply captioning your duet with a heading of something that will garner more curiosity or interaction or even spice it up and make it a little more controversial. This can do you both a lot of good since when you spice up someone in your niche's video, you not only tie your algorithmic connections to that creator, but you also boost that artist's post, spread valuable information and become involved in the circle of content that you usually gets your video more often seen. It's a win all around for everyone. This is one of the easiest videos musicians can make to get out of algorithmic jail right now. Even someone as big as Tommy Richmond, who has the number two song on Billboard right now, does this. He says, Ayo, what genre is this? I know a lot of you can't figure out what your genre is, and this is a great format to get engagement in the comments and get your reply rate up, even if you know what genre it is. It often gets fans of that genre commenting, which will get them to see your next 
next video because we all know when you comment on someone's video, you usually see more of their videos and that could help convert them to your earworm. I consider doing videos every once in a while that says, what genre am I? Since this is an essential one to any song campaign. How is creating a bunch of content before your song is out not spam? When you're an unknown musician, your goals of creating content should be to bring value to your audience and convert them over to hearing your song since you may never get that chance again. If you're promoting your unreleased track over and over, it might start to feel spammy for a reason when people can't get the value, which is listening to it in full. There's simply no value to the viewer if you're never giving them a payoff. You're just giving a bad first impression. This is amazing content to bond with fans. This video from the sick group, White Reaper, is an amazing example of the content you all should be making. Showing off your life going to shows or on tour or the studio and the differences in the personalities of the people you work with is content that warms fans to you and actually gets watched while establishing bonds with fans that make them feel closer to you. Think about making videos that show the differences in your personalities since people will talk to you about them when they meet you in real life and think about them all day long and you'll get rewarded for it. Posting and ghosting is better than not posting. So many music artists aren't having the best time mentally and tell me that they can't handle the nasty things people say to them on here. And I get it. I just had a week where people told me to get cancer again, which didn't feel good. But a thing to remember, it's okay to take time off from reading comments and just post and not click the comments tab. These apps all have the comments segregated so you can avoid seeing them to protect yourself, especially if the cost is depression that makes you not want to make content and promote your music. Should musicians with very few fans tease their song for weeks before it's released? One of the things I have to constantly remind musicians is what works for musicians with big fan bases is not what works for those of you building up from the bottom. And this is another case of that. Since your biggest problem is you need to get people to hear your song and then get addicted to it so that people tune into what you do on a regular basis. If you actually get their attention, you don't want to drop this ball. Whereas artists with big fan bases can create anticipation and pull attention for a bigger explosion since people already know they like them and will be more forgiving. You're not the same.